Hello guys, Diego Costa here, back with another video on programming within Python. Today, we're going to be looking at iteration. Now, there are two types of iteration um, that you can do in Python. These are count-controlled loops, and those, there's also condition-controlled loops. For this video, we're going to be looking at count-controlled loops, and in the next video, that's when we're going to, where, that's when we're going to be looking at condition-controlled loops. Now, Iteration is just a more fancy way of saying looping. It's just basically is you enter some code, you enter how many how many times you want it to loop, and it will loop through that code. Through that code. One example they're shown over here is this one. So if I just copy this, just indent that. Anyway, save this as well. I've not save this. Oh, here. here's one. I'll just replace that. Okay, so let me explain you, let me go through this code. So this is one way of looping, this is called count control looping. The reason it's called count control looping is because I'm telling the program, start from zero and loop five times. Now the reason I'm telling to start from zero is because in Python, Python, Python always starts at zero. And you'll become more familiar with that when you do lists. Um, but yeah, you don't count from one in Python, you count from zero. Um, so for i in range of 0, start at 0, this would count as 0, the first one would count as 0, and loop it 5 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, it, and all it just does, it, it, it just repeats any code below this colon 5 times. Now since you start at 0, you don't require to put in 0 comma because Python automatically defaults to zero as being uh, um, for that, or just automatically default it to zero. So you don't, you're not required to put zero, but let's say you want to start at one, you'll put one, etc. But I feel like if you put a five, I'm sure anyone who knows Python would know, oh, you're starting from zero. So I usually don't put zero comma five, I usually just put five, but you can put zero comma five. In the loop for i in range x and y, x is the starting value of i and y is the one above what it, what it will get to do. So above it runs i equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, because because you start at 0 and you're going to loop it 5 times, that will be up to 4. Since you're starting at 0 and not starting from 1. Traditionally, loops tend to use variables i, j, and k, and you may see lots of code that conforms to this convention. I've never seen anyone use j and k. I've only seen the use of i and x, or another variable, another more suitable variable. However, there, there is, however, no reason why you can't use another variable, especially when it makes your code more readable. Write a program that outputs the word computing 15 times. So let's do this. So they've given the example of this over here. So let's copy this example. Let's go through this. I'm going to change this to 15. I'm saying for i in range, loop, loop 15 times. And what, what they're basically asking over here, what, or what they're basically showing, is the numbers over here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's i. So whenever you loop, right, the i will, will state the number, the numbers at of the looping. So print string, because it's an integer, i is an integer and needs to be converted. Put a space over here. And let's check it to computing. Right, and you'll see as it loops 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. As you can see, it will just print out the number that it's at of the looping phase. Next task. A program that takes in a letter and number and then prints out that letter that many times. Okay, so let's do that. So let's type in letter equals input. Open bracket and let's actually, let's actually add a comment over here saying task 8b. So we know it's separate. So 
since since uh, comments were used in the since comments were taught in the last lesson, I should probably make use of them now. now let's put this as example. So task eight B. So let's say please enter letter a letter colon. That's good. Now let's do number equals input. Please enter a number. So let's do now one of these loops for. Now this one you're going to do is you. You can do i in range, but instead of putting a number here, you're going to put the the variable number. So I just double click on number, Control C, Control V, colon, and we're going to want to print out letter as well, like that. So we uh, so when we F5 this, please enter letter. Let's use their example T. Capital T they use, and they want it six times. Oh, error. Let's see, where is this? Oh, I know. You cannot have a string value as a as uh, to put inside of a range. I did not assign it as an int. Let's try that again. Six. Now oh, six. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Didn't exactly pronounce this, but oh well. Still print it out. Uh, task eight C. Let's let's just put a comment over here saying task eight C. And the task is right from when they ask the number for a number, then output its its ten times table. 1 times 7 is 7. Okay. Let me just move this. I mean, I just cut. Let me just, just minimize that actually. So let's do let's again a um, number. Because int input. So please enter a number. And let's close the brackets. And we know when it's closed because this um, gray. It gets great. It gets highlighted between the open and the closed bracket, so we know that one's closed, and now this one's closed as well. I want to do four. Now we could do i for i in range of the number. What we could say is we could say print. Should we make it as a string? They're saying one times seven is seven. What we could do is we could always make this print i. Yeah, I'm just gonna check this to make sure that this works. Actually, what we would do is we actually because it wants it ten times, we wouldn't do it like that. We won't have the range of that rule. We'll Put it over here. Oh, this will be the amount of times we want it to do it. And we want it to multiply i. So we need to say our stance from 1. And we want it to do 1, 2, 3. Yeah, okay. Let's try that. So let's see over here. Let's actually comment out this, the rest of this. Because we don't want this to be running. So let's just comment that out. Please enter number 7. 7, 14, and because Python starts at 0, we need to put this to do from to 11 to get 70. So we have the answers, definitely. We do have the answers. Now we just need to put this text. They want it like this. So we've got that. So we want it for i in range, starting from 1 to 11, because that'll make, because Python starts at 0, so you have to do plus 1. Anyway. Oh, wait, you always have to do um, plus one over here because it starts at zero. Print. So currently, it was so currently just printing this. Yeah. Okay. So instead of printing, what we could do is we could say i 
multiply, one could say is actually answer is equal to i multiply number. So we're getting the answer first, and then we want to print out string. We print out i, because that will be 1, 2, 3, plus times, and we could say plus, space for as well, plus the number that was used, 7, plus is, let's get space for plus the answer, let's try that, oh, and string the answer as well, we must string the answer as well, we probably have to string the number as well, we must string the number as well, because, okay, what's wrong? Plus, we forgot the plus of here. Okay. So, 7, 1. 1 times 7 is 7. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 7 is 21. Etc, etc. And we, what we could actually do is we could add, enter any number. So, we could say 3. And it would do the 3 times table for us. Right? So, what we just done is we've done answer is equal to is equal to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because all the loops, which is i, that will always change because once you're going for the loop, times the number that was given, which was 7, print out i, which will change to 1, 2, 3, 4, plus times, plus the number that we entered, which was 7, plus is, plus the answer, which will always change because we're always because we're looping through. So this, this calculation will always be changing as it goes through. That's going to be it for today's lesson. Thank you guys for watching, and hope to see you guys very soon. Goodbye.